The live is on. The live is on. We had to deal with some technical stuff up front, but we are here. And I'm going to give people a moment to get into the stream, and then we're going to get into uh, everything we need to get into tonight. Welcome everyone who is coming in here. We are live on Instagram on my left over here. We live on Facebook over here. And y'all are all welcome to work on your game university. This is Dre all day coming to y'all live. You can hear my voice right now. You don't see my face, but you will see my face in a moment because I had to grab my materials. But we are here as y'all come in. Remind from Norway with the first comment was good. As y'all come in. I'm going to give everybody like 30 seconds to introduce themselves, to leave your name and location in the comments, and then we're getting right into it. We ain't even going to waste too much time on the intros no more. We're getting right into the material, and whoever's late is late, because I announced this. So just for y'all to know, everybody on Instagram, I posted this on my Facebook page. My Facebook is slash work on your game. So anybody want to know uh, when I'm going live, what the topics, all that, Facebook slash work on your game. I do have an event posted there on Facebook for anybody looking. I know all y'all got a Facebook account. Instagram, I'm going live every day at 6.15 p.m. Eastern. Everybody heard that? I'm going live at 6.15 p.m. Eastern every day, at least for as long as we got this whole the quarantine situation going on. So at least probably through the month of April, I'm going live every day. So now for those of y'all don't know me, my name is Dre Baldwin, also known as Dre All Day. I created this whole framework here that is called Work On Your Game. It's about using the discipline. First of all, it's the pro athlete mindset applied to your business, sport, and life. It's about the discipline to show up day after day to do the work, the confidence to put yourself out there boldly and authentically, the mental toughness to continue showing up, doing the work, even when the success you've expected to achieve is yet to be achieved, and a personal initiative to keep showing up, doing the work, even when the success you have expected to achieve. And actually, let me, let me back up. I messed that part up. The personal initiative to go make things happen instead of waiting for things to happen. That's what work on your game is. That's the whole framework. I explained that whole framework, laid it all out in my book called Work On Your Game, but we will talk about this later, and we'll talk about some other things later. But today's topic is what you should major in when you're in school. What is the major that you should focus on at university? But listen, listen, listen. If you're not in school, you still should listen to this, because what I'm about to talk about is about your life education. I'm not talking about when you're enrolled at a college or you're at the community school or whatever, you no know, University of Miami, UCLA, UM, Harvard. I'm not talking about being in college as a student. I'm talking about what you should major in when it comes to your learning, when it comes to making yourself better, when it comes to, your take, when it comes to taking yourself to a higher level. The things that I'm going to tell you here apply to everybody, even if you're no longer in school. Everybody on Facebook, leave me a comment. Tell me your name and location as y'all are coming into the stream. This is what I do. For those of y'all don't know, I've been doing these lives every day on Instagram ever since... Actually, I did this at the beginning of the year. From the beginning of 2020, I started doing lives every single day. I've done this before at other periods. But everybody on Facebook who's coming in, tell me your name and location in the comment section. Because I can't see. Y'all can see me, but I can't see you. So name and location in the comments and Instagram, y'all already know. So here's the thing. When you finish with school, when you finish with your education, when you finish with, when you graduate and you know that you're done with school or you just get done, you didn't even know you were done, but you end up being done, that is not the end of your education. That is not the end of your learning. All right. When you graduate from school, that's the beginning of your learning. When you go, when you have a graduation ceremony at school, Mattia from Croatia was good. All right. So you went from IG to Facebook. That's, that's cool. When you graduate from school, the event is called the commencement, right? They call it commencement ceremonies. They usually have them every May, June, July, June, May and June, I guess, when people graduate from school. Hopefully, they still are able to have them this year. You know what commencement means? Commencement means the beginning. Commence means to start. So graduation is not the end, it's the beginning. So if you're out of school, everything I'm going to say here applies to you as well as anybody who was in school. And I get people who ask me this sometimes, Dre, what should I major in in school if I want to make money when I get out, if I want to you know, have a good job, what's a good thing to major in? People ask me these questions that are not really answerable because you need more context to be able to answer such a question. And if I'm not your, your personal coach, then it ain't really my position to be telling you what to major in in school. But when I explain these to you here today, everybody's going to understand exactly what I mean when I'm telling you what you should major in when you're in school. Number one, actually, I'll also tell you, and for, well, from my own experience, since I'm the one that's going to be giving you this information, I'm going to tell you how 
I either took advantage of these things or I didn't take as much advantage as I could have of these exact majors as I explain each one to you what it is, why it is, how to use it, and how some people mess it up and don't use it properly. Number one, first thing you should major in in college. I don't care what subject you're interested in, what kind of job you're trying to get, what internships you're working in, what sports you play, what frat or sorority you are pledged to. The number one thing you should major in when you are in college or in school, period, in life is personal development. That's the number one thing to major in is personal development, personal growth, personal advancement, professional development, whatever phrase you want to call it. Doing things, let me give you a definition of what personal development means. It means doing things intentionally to make yourself a more valuable individual. This is the number one thing you should major in when you're educating yourself. Again, you could be 55 years old out of school. You could be the professor at the school. And you could be 20 years old in the middle of school, right, in the, right 10 toes deep in it. Number one thing to major in is your personal growth and personal development. Again, let me tell you what that means. That means you purposely doing things, consuming materials that will make you a more valuable individual. Better, faster, smarter, more efficient, uh, making fewer mistakes. All of these things are personal growth. You must invest in this. Understand, you don't grow personally. After this period that we call puberty, you know, when you grow taller and your, uh, your organs and your body just develops to your adult you, be, you grow into your adult body. Some people happen sooner. For some people, it happens later. When puberty ends, that's the last time in life that any human being grows by default. All right, you grow taller from age 13 to age 21. You're probably going to get taller. All right, male or female, you could be 5'2 or 6'7. You're going to grow a little bit taller between age 13 and age 21. Maybe you'll grow a little bit. Maybe you'll grow a whole lot. But everybody grows. Okay, Your organs grow. Your uh, your reproductive system grows, all of those things grow and develop into their adult size probably by the age of, let's say, your early to mid-20s. After that, there is no other growth that occurs for a human being by default. Okay, Your brain doesn't grow anymore. Your physical body doesn't grow anymore if you don't do anything. You must choose to do something to make yourself better. If you want to get stronger after the age of 22 and puberty is over, you got to go lift some weights. Uh, you want to get smarter after you finish with college, you got to go buy some books and you got to read them or you got to go find a coach or you got to go join a mastermind or you got to subscribe to somebody's podcast. You got to do something that's going to make you better, smarter, faster, more efficient, a more valuable individual. Everybody understand it? Value, ladies and gentlemen, is relative. So valuable is not about what you think about you. It's about how much of a difference can you make in the lives of other people? Because even if you're a person who's right now, you're really focused on you, not because you're selfish or negative, but because you need to help yourself out. Right? You might need to make some money right now. You need to get yourself in a better position. You're trying to get your car fixed. You need a job. You're trying to finish school. You're trying to pay for school. You need to take care of your kids. There's nothing wrong with being focused on yourself. But understand something. If you just think of it rationally and practically, the only way you can get anything for yourself is by providing things for other people. You see, the only if I'm all out for myself, all I care about right now is how much money can I make for me? The only way I can make money for me is what? I got to go find somebody who needs something that I can offer, offer it to them, offer it to them, and then create an exchange. All right, so if I got this book right here, and I'm like, all right, I need to make some money. Now, I got this book. This book is valuable. I got to find somebody who could use this book. I had to explain to them the virtues, the positive uh, positives of this book and the benefits they would get from reading this book. And then I tell them, look, it's twenty five dollars for this book and I'm going to give you a whole bunch of bonuses. They give me the twenty five. I give them the book and the bonuses. They get something. I get something. Everybody wins. I took care of myself by finding somebody else to take care of. So when I say making yourself a more valuable individual through personal development, you need to figure out what ways will make you more useful for other people. Not just more useful in your mind, but more useful in the minds of the people that you want to serve. So if you're a personal trainer, you got to figure out what ways can I give more value to the people who need a personal trainer. If you're a dog walker, how can I give more value to people who need their dogs walk because they're at work all day? Not now because we all quarantine, but when people are at work all day in their office and need somebody to walk their dog twice a day, how can I give more value so I can charge more money? They'll be happy to pay it. And everybody wins in a situation. The dog wins. The owner wins. I win. The economy wins because now i got some more money to spend. It's a win, 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 win situation all around. How do you make yourself more valuable? Personal growth, personal development. This is the number one thing you should be majoring in in all of your life. Okay, I don't care if you dropped out of school in the sixth grade. You need to major in this for the rest of your life no matter what you do. And anybody who's watching right now who's come in, 
I will address, I will take questions at the end of the stream. I do that every time I will take questions at the end of the stream, but you got to be here to actually hear your questions and get answers. So personal development can take the form of connecting with other people, the law of association, getting around people who are better than you or at your level and doing other things, learning from them, the law of synergy, one plus one equals three. That's getting around the right people. Uh, reading books, subscribing to somebody's podcast, go signing up for someone's online course, going to a seminar, going to events. And when you're on, if you happen to be a college student right now, listen, you have a golden opportunity to get into personal development because the whole lot of it probably going on right there on the campus where you're at. There are people on your campus right now who are doing things that could benefit you, but you got to open your eyes and know where they're at. You got to know where people are gathering, know what's going on. Go to the events that are happening on campus. Go to things that you wouldn't normally go to. Go meet some people that you wouldn't normally meet. Don't just hang with the same people that are just like the people from the neighborhood that you come from. You go to school for four years and you haven't expanded your horizons at all. Why would you even do that? What's the purpose of you even going? You spent all that money and you didn't even get any value out of it. So make sure you are expanding your horizons through this first principle of personal growth. Second thing you got to major in when you're in school. And anybody who came in later you know, on Facebook or, or IG, y'all both see the topic. I already posted it, so I ain't got to tell you. Second thing to major in in school. This is very, very important. To major in this in all of your life as well, relationships. Relationships. Now, if I was to stop right here and just give you these two, personal growth and relationships, and you really got focused on getting a whole lot better at both of these, in your personal growth and in building and nurturing and leveraging relationships, <clears throat> excuse me, you would make yourself a thousand times more valuable just off these two points alone. Personal growth and relationships. Let's talk about relationships. In life, what most people do, let me tell you what most people do in life. They get around or they're born into a certain neighborhood, environment, they're around a certain type of individual and they spend their whole lives only associating with, talking to, listening to, thinking like, dealing with that same type of individual. All right? And there's a whole lot of people in the world who are like this. Whatever, whatever environment they come from, those are the only kind of people that they know. That's the only kind of people they're comfortable with. Those are the only people that they'll talk to. Those are the only people that they'll do business with, do any kind of interaction with, be friends with, that they'll speak to when they see them in the street because they never expanded their horizons outside of the small little environment that they come from we all come from a very small place and then we can expand outward we all have the possibility the potential to expand outward but many people never actually do it and the thing is this they say the average human being average human being knows like by name if they really had to think about it knows about 750 people so let's say if you're below average then you maybe know 400 500 people and if you're above average let's say you're double that let's say you're triple that you might know 2,000 people all right, if you're way, way more connected than the average person, you might know 2,000 people. Now, there are 7 billion people on the planet, and you know 2,000. Do you understand how small, how tiny a percentage of the world you have actually connected with to this point in your life? And I'm explaining that to you to explain to you this. All right, are you going to be able to meet all 7 billion people in the world? Probably not. Even if they all lined up, you just walk one by one shaking their hands, you probably die before you shook everybody's hand. The point that I'm giving you is this. There's a whole lot going on in this world with a whole lot of other people that you know nothing about. You don't know anything about it. You never read about it. You never heard of it. You don't know anyone who knows anything about it, but it's out there. It is available to you. But if you keep yourself in the social, as they say, social ghetto. And when I say ghetto, I'm not talking about living in a projects or a bad neighborhood. When I say ghetto, I mean being in a certain little box and never coming out of that box. That's what I mean when I say social ghetto. You stay in a social ghetto of uh, you only talk to, if you're black, you only talk to black people. Or you're Jewish, you only talk to Jewish people. Or you're from a certain country, you only talk to people from your country. Or whatever, whatever box you want to put yourself in. And we all put ourselves in boxes in ways that we're not even aware of. If that's all you do, you are severely limiting your horizons in life. And this is one of the great things that I tell people about college. So somebody posted a comment today on one of my posts on IG. And they said, Dre, uh, what did you major in in college? And I said, well, technically, if you were to look at the, the framed degree that is on the wall in my mother and father's house, it says, I got a degree in business with a focus in management and marketing from Penn State University. So technically, that's my degree. But what I actually majored in, when anybody asks me, I always tell them, yeah, I got a business degree from Penn State. But if you want to know what I really majored in, I majored in two things in college. One of them was basketball and the other one was social 
interaction. All right, those are my two majors. I majored in socializing. One of the most valuable things that I got out of college was not anything that I learned in a classroom, nothing I learned in a textbook that they charged me $65 for at the beginning of the semester, then they buy it back for me for $9 at the end of the semester. Some of y'all know about that hustle. It's one of the greatest hustles going on right now is what colleges do with textbooks. But the most valuable thing I got out of college was my socializing. The fact that I got to meet people who are from the neighborhood that I'm from, most people from that neighborhood never leave that neighborhood. All right, and not counting being on the internet. I'm talking about physically going anywhere else. I had never really been anywhere in my life by the time I went to college. I was 18 years old already. But when I went to away to college at Penn State, I met all these different types of people. I had never really been around that many white people, honestly, except like the teachers at school. And they didn't really count because it's not like you had a relationship with them. They were just teachers. They were just doing their job. I had never really been around white people. I hadn't really been around anybody who wasn't from Philadelphia, where I'm from. I hadn't been around... There was a whole lot of things going on, let's just say that, on a college campus because there's all these different pockets of people that I didn't know anything about until I got there. I didn't know anything about, I had never really drank. I hadn't really drank beer or alcohol. I didn't like my parents was giving me beer and alcohol, but you go to college, they got all these kinds of parties and people are doing this stuff. And not to say that necessarily that's what you need to be doing, but the point is this. I was able to open myself up by being where I was at and being open-minded enough to see, you know what, how about I explore what these people are doing over here. Let me see what they're doing right here. I mean, in, engage with this person right here and see what they're talking about, see where they're from, see why they think, why they think. And this is the way that I was able to build relationships. And all of my, not all of them, but uh, many of my best friends to this very day are people that I met in that four year span of going to college. Not the people that I knew before college for 18 years and not people that I met necessarily after. There are some in that group from both groups, but that four years in college, I met a lot of the people who are my closest friends to this very day simply because we were all in the same place. This is a great thing about school. You have a shared experience. Everybody's around the same age. You're all doing pretty much the same thing, going to school and you know, getting yourself ready for adult life. You got some semi-autonomy where you're not 100% on your own, but you're away enough from you know, your home life that you could pretty much do whatever it is you want. You could you know, waste time, bullshit, get drunk, go out, party, and nobody's going to know about it. You won't get in trouble for it. So that's the great thing about being on a college campus. But forget about college. What if you're not in college? What if you're 35 and you've been out of school, you didn't even go to college? What if you're 47, you never even went to school? What about you? Do relationships matter to you? I would say yes. Anybody want to contest that and say that they don't? Understand something about relationships. You can get more done through knowing the right person than you would ever get done through having the right skill on your own. There's only so much that one person can do by themselves, skill-wise. I don't care how talented you are, how much of a hustler you are, how hard you work, how smart you think you are, how connected you are, even how much money you got. There's only so much one person can do. We are limited as humans to only being in one physical location at a time. You only got one mouth, two eyes, two ears. There's only so much you can take in at a time. There's only, you only got two hands. There's only so much you can do yourself in a day, let alone a year or a lifetime. But when you know the right people in the right places who are doing other things, they can do things for you that you can't do for you. And you can do things for other people that they can't do for themselves. But here's the thing. Let me tell this to everybody who's listening to me right now. There are some things that you could do for other people out there in the world right now who you would benefit greatly from helping them out because they would give you something in exchange for your help. But the problem is you're not helping them right now. And the reason why you're not helping them is because you don't know them and they don't know you. And that's because you are keeping yourself in this box, this boxy life that you're living and you're not connecting with other people outside of your box. I mean, everyone who's listening to this, when's the last time you met somebody new? When's the last time you made a new connection? When's the last time you met somebody that you had never met before? You connected with that person. You know their name. They know your name. You know a little bit about them. They know a little bit about you. You exchange information. And you're going to follow up with that person. When is the last time you met a new person? Interesting question, right? Some people get to 40, 50, 60 years old. They ain't met a new person in 20 years. They've been talking to the same people every day, all of their lives. They live the same life over and over again. It's like Groundhog's Day. When's the last time you met somebody new? Now, I don't need you to tell me, but you need to ask yourself that. Because there's 7 billion people on the planet. The average person knows about 700. How many do you know? How many people you know? What skills do you have that will benefit a whole lot of people, but you're not benefiting any of those people right now because none of those people know who the hell you are 
And then here's the follow-up question. What is your strategy to actually get people to know who you are? What are you going to do to make sure people know you? How are you going to know? How are you going to meet new people? I mean, you going outside talking to people in your neighborhood? Are you uh, when you see somebody who might be interesting? Do you strike up a conversation? Are you putting content on the internet so that people can come across you and know who you are and know what you're about? What are you doing to uh, to push your name and your value, whatever it is, out to new audiences of people on a consistent basis? What's your strategy for doing that? Do you have a strategy for it? If you don't, you need to get one. Because relationships, again, can do a whole lot for you that you can't do for you. And there's going to come a time in your life. Maybe this time has already happened before. I'm sure it has, but it'll happen again. When there's something that you need done that you can't do for whatever reason. Maybe you don't know the right people. Maybe you don't have the right information. Maybe you don't have the time. Maybe you don't have the money. Maybe you just have no idea what to do. But there's someone out there who could easily take care of it for you if you know who they are and they know who you are. If there's a relationship between you and that person. So like I talked about in the first point, if you want to get something for yourself to help yourself, then that means you got to do something to help other people. And when you're doing things to help other people, you're building that relationship. People remember when you do something to help them out. And then you invoke the reciprocity, the, the reciprocity factor that is ingrained in all human beings. Someone does something for you, you want to do something back for them. That's just the way that we're wired as humans. It has nothing to do with being selfish or being a nice person. We're all wired like this. But you can only build those relationships by you got to go out and do something. And you can't always do it through your phone or through Facebook or through Instagram because that's that's the passive way of building relationships. Now, how strong are the bonds you build with a person you're talking to on Instagram and DM? You never met them in person. Most of the time, it never becomes anything tangible. Some people I've met many people who have said, yeah, we met online and then we started talking. and We became cool and they actually became real life friends but a lot of times you're just talking to people online you don't know them they don't know you and it never turns into anything useful for you or for them you got to go outside i mean physically outside maybe not now because everybody's supposed to be in the house but you know what i mean go outside and actually meet people offer your value to other people do things to help other people and that will build value in you you build value in that relationship and when you need to call on somebody you can call on that person because you gave them some value in the past and you keep doing this for as many people as possible so when you need something you're going to have so many people wanting to help you out that you, you're just going to have to choose between them. That's going to be your biggest problem. Building relationships is one of the hugest, hugest, the biggest things that you could do in your life. And make sure you know people. There's another key about relationships. Make sure you know people who are from outside of your normal circle. All right. Don't just connect with people who do the same things that you do. So if you're black, don't, all, don't have all your friends just be black people. If you're Jewish, all your friends shouldn't just be Jewish people. If you're a lawyer, all your friends should not be lawyers. If you're an online influencer, all your friends should not be online influencers. And let me tell you why this is important. Yes, you should. If you're a lawyer, you should know other lawyers. So you can know what's going on in the lawyer world. And if you're black, you want to know what's going on in the black world. So you're going to know a whole bunch of black people. But understand this. You don't want all of your friends to be, be doing the same thing that you do or fit the same profile as you because they're going to have the same blind spots that you have. You see, if you're a lawyer and all your friends are lawyers and you need a mechanic, okay, none of your lawyer friends know how to fix a car because they're doing the same thing, sitting in the office, pushing papers like you're doing every single day. So how are they going to fix the car? You don't know any mechanics because everybody you know is a lawyer. Or if you need a personal trainer or you need somebody to take care of your kid or you're looking for somebody who writes books because you're thinking about writing a book or you're looking for someone who knows how to run Facebook ads because you want to start advertising your company on Facebook, you don't know anyone who does any of those things because all of your friends do the same thing that you do, which means not only do they have the same skills as you, which is a good thing, but they also have the same weaknesses as you. The same things that you don't know anything about, they don't know anything about. If all your friends are of the same, from the same background, from the same neighborhood, speak the same language, know the same stuff, they're probably also going to have the same weaknesses. You're going to have the same common missing ingredients. So you want to know people who know a whole lot of different things. I got friends who don't use the internet at all. I'm like, yo, you got an Instagram account? No. You on Facebook? No. They don't use the internet at all. Their, their likeness is nowhere online, even though I'm all over the internet. But that's a good thing. I want to have friends who don't do the same things that I do. So in case I need something that that person does, that person who's not online at all, I could call on that person. And if they need something that's on the Internet, they could call me. I know people who don't care anything about sports, even though I was an athlete, which is good because they probably know a whole lot of other stuff about things that I wouldn't know about because I was busy playing sports. So you all understand you want to have you want to diversify and in, uh, investing. You hear people say diversify your portfolio. 
This is what I'm talking about. All right? I'm not telling you to get into investing. All right? Go talk to a, a financial advisor about that. What I mean is diversify your portfolio of friends. Know people in different areas. Do you know any lawyers, just in case you need one? Do you know any mechanics? Do you know anybody who's in the streets? Do you know anybody who's on the internet? Do you know people who run ads? Do you know people who write books? Do you know people who play sports? Do you know males? Do you know females? Do you know people of a different race from you, a different religion from you? People from the other side of the country, the other side of town, the other side of the world. How diverse are your friends? Think about that. And you know pretty quickly if you have a diverse set of friends or if you don't. Point number three. What we're talking about here is the things you should major in for your education and life. Number three, you got to major in leadership. Leadership. Because every one of us has to be a leader of ourselves and a boss of ourselves, even if you're just an organization of one. Malcolm X said in his book, the autobiography of Malcolm X, is actually written by Alex Haley, but it's Malcolm X's words. He just talked, Alex Haley wrote it down. If you haven't read that book, you should read it. Malcolm X said, every organization must have a boss. All right, even if that organization is an organization of one person, or even if you have no job, no employees, nobody on your team, nobody working with you, you are still an organization of one. You must be the boss of yourself. Everybody is the boss in their own organization. So when I say leadership, you need to learn how to lead not only yourself, but also learn how to lead other people. Because the better you are at leading other people, the more opportunities will come your way. The reason why that is, is because a lot of people, some of you who are, are aspiring leaders, you might think there's a whole lot of competition to be leaders. There's very little competition for leadership in life. Most people do not want the burden of leadership because leader, with leadership comes responsibility. Most people don't want responsibility because responsibility also means if things don't work out, they get the blame. And most people don't want to deal with that. They're so afraid of getting the blame if things don't work that even when nothing's even happening, there's nothing going wrong, they don't want to take on the burden of responsibility because if things go wrong, they're worried about what might happen if things go bad. And this is why... There's a huge void for leaders in this world. We need leaders. So any of you who plans on becoming a leader, listen, there will be, be plenty of opportunity for you to step up and do that. When you're out there in life and you see an opportunity to lead, even if it's an unpaid opportunity or you think it might be a lot of work or you have to deal with some people that you don't even know like that, you're not sure if they're going to follow your lead, take that opportunity. Because even if you go through a failure in leadership, you learn something. You learn how to deal with people. You learn what works and what doesn't work. Uh, many of you who are watching this right now, y'all are watching this on an iPhone or a Mac computer or an iPad. All right. So at, and these are all the brainchild of a guy named Steve Jobs. And any of y'all who hasn't, hasn't read the book that's called Steve Jobs by Walter Isaacson, I suggest you go get that book and read it. Steve Jobs started Apple. I think a lot of y'all know that. Do y'all know, y'all remember that Steve Jobs got kicked out of Apple? Can you imagine starting your own company and getting kicked out? The reason he got kicked out of his own company he got voted out of his own company by the shareholders because he was a bad leader. He had become really bad at leadership. He was a really smart guy. He was very innovative. He had great ideas, obviously, but he was bad at leadership. Those are not the same thing. Being skilled and being a leader are two different things. This is why uh, everybody, anybody who watches basketball, we all know Kobe Bryant. Rest in peace. Kobe Bryant was not the main captain of the L.A. Lakers when they were winning those championships. The main captain of that team was a guy named Derek Fisher. Derek Fisher was not a superstar. He never made the All-Star game. He's not going to make the Hall of Fame. He was a solid player, but he wasn't the best player. He wasn't the most talented player. So having talent, having game, and being a leader are not the same thing. Now, sometimes you have someone who can double as both, and there are plenty of examples of that. But Derek Fisher was the leader of those Lakers teams. He was the vocal guy. Kobe was the guy. They followed his lead, obviously, because Kobe was very good. But Derek Fisher was the man. I'm explaining that to you. For y'all to understand that having game and being a leader are not the same thing. So just because you have game does not mean you're a leader. Okay, so you need to develop both of these skills. The more leadership ability you have, the more opportunities you create for yourself in life. And number four, fourth thing you got to major in is trying things out. You got to major in going into areas that you're not used to going into, trying stuff that you never tried before. All right, you don't, you're not a partying type of person. All right, go party. Go to a party. Just see what it's like. All right, you never dealt with somebody of that skin color. Go talk to somebody of that skin color. Maybe they'll have something interesting to say that you can learn from. Maybe they'll become a friend of yours. Maybe by talking to that person, you'll be less apprehensive about black people or white people or Latin people or Asian people or uh, Arab people or, a or Australian people or people who don't speak perfect English. Maybe you'll be less apprehensive about that type of person the next time you see one because of this one who you talk to. But a lot of times in life, again, people stay in these boxes 
and you talk to the same type of people, do the same things, go to the same places all of your life, and you wonder why your life isn't growing, why you're not expanding, why you're not moving forward, because you're staying in a box. In life, you do not grow by default. You only grow by choice. You have to make the choice to do these things that I'm talking about, and I'm laying out the framework for you right here, exactly what you need to do to make sure that you grow in life. So this is not about being in school. So I called it, what's a major in that university? But listen, life is a university. You see where I say that link down there says work on your game, you.com university, work on your game university. All right, I've been out of school for 15 years, but I'm still running the university. Why? Because that's the only way people grow is you got to be in a mindset of growth, a mindset of improvement, a mindset of educating yourself, a mindset of getting better. Go find somebody who's doing something that you want to do. Ask them if you could watch them for a whole day. If you could follow them for a day, you could shadow them. If you can, you'll pay for their lunch and you'll pay for their dinner. If you could just follow them for the whole day. So that's the investment you make. You invest a day of your time and what it will cost you, $50, $100 to pay for the food. Now you invest that and you can follow someone around and see what their life is really like. What is it really like to be an author? What is it really like to be a college professor? What's it really like to be an influencer? What's it really like to be a professional speaker? What's it really like to run your own hardware store in a neighborhood? What is it really like? You might think you know what it's like, but you don't really know what it's like until you do it. These are things that you can try out. The worst case scenario, somebody says no. Worst case scenario, you go up to somebody and you try to strike up a conversation because you never talk to somebody who looks like them or comes from where they come from and they're not interested. That's the worst case. Go ask the next person. Then the next person, the next person. Somebody's going to say yes. Somebody's going to talk to you. But you got to be willing to step out of your own box in order to expand. All right, everybody got that? Now I'm going to recap these points. And as I recap these points, anyone who has a question, you can go ahead and post it in the comment section. I will get to it. I'm going to recap these points. I'm going to give you all a couple commercials for these free, these free books that I'm giving away. And then I'm going to answer all the questions. So what, do you, what should you major in the university, the school of life, whether you're in college or not? Number one, personal development. No human being grows by default after puberty. You must choose to grow. You must choose to go buy books, sign up for courses, go to seminars, go find a mentor, find a mastermind group to join, sign up for somebody's online course. Personal development is the most valuable thing you can invest in in all of your life in school or out of school. Number two, relationships. Make as many friends as possible. There is no downside to knowing more people and having more people know you. Expand your circle of friends and make sure all your friends are not just like you. All right, don't have a whole bunch of friends who look like you, walk like you, talk like you. Have some friends who are nothing like you so that when you have a need that is outside of your scope of skill, you could call somebody who has that skill. But if all your friends are just like you, they're going to be missing the same skills that you're missing. And you got a whole bunch of people who are just like you. You're all missing the same piece of the same puzzle. Point number three, leadership. Join clubs. Start your own club. Take on every opportunity to take leadership and responsibility as possible. Malcolm X said, Every organization must have a boss, even if you are an organization of one person, you are the boss of your own organization. Every organization must be, have, be bossed by somebody. You got to be the boss of you. The more leadership roles you take on, the better you will be as a leader when it comes to other people and when it comes to yourself. Because if you can't lead you, you can't lead anyone else. And number four, trying things out. In addition to people, trying out different people, try out different jobs, try out different roles. People ask me, Dre, how can I figure out my passion in life? Well, the simplest way to figure out your passion is to try out a whole bunch of stuff and find which things you're interested in. Now, you're not going to find your passion by reading books. You're not going to find your passion by watching somebody's live on Instagram. You're not going to find your passion by uh, commenting on YouTube videos. You find your passion by going out and doing things, seeing what fits you, what makes the most sense for you, what sparks something in you, what do you want to come back to the next day? What are you really interested in learning more about? Then dive deep into things you're interested in, then find out what's really going on in those areas, and then decide what you want to do. All right, there are plenty of opportunities out here in this world. I mean, the world that y'all, you are growing up in right now, I don't care how old you are, we're all growing up. The world that you're growing up in right now has more possibilities than has ever existed. So there's no excuse for anybody not knowing what their passion is, except that you just are, you're still trying things you haven't found it yet. But if you don't know what your passion is and you're not trying new things, then what the hell are you doing? Or why are you taking up space on this planet if you're not looking for what you really want to do and you haven't found it yet? Well, what are you doing? Are you just, you just waiting to die or what? What's the problem? I don't know. You have to tell me. So those are the things you should major in in the school of life. I'm going to take questions right now. I think I see a lot of comments coming through, at least on Instagram, Facebook. Y'all got comments or questions. You can go ahead and post them, but I know a lot of times on Facebook they come in later on, so I will check those later. So, those of y'all who don't know me, my name is Dre Baldwin. I wrote this book called Work On Your Game. 
What I teach is this whole framework, using the pro athlete mindset to dominate your game in business, sports, and life. You can buy this book at workingyourgamebook.com. It's also on Amazon, but if you get it at workingyourgamebook.com, you get bonuses that you cannot get on Amazon. You can only get them from me. Now, I'm going to tell you about the free books. This book is free. It's called The Mirror Motivation, The Self-Guide to Self-Discipline. You get this book to get that self-discipline, to light that spark, light that fire within you, which means you can start living the life you actually want to live by doing what you want to do and being the person that you really want to be. If you want that, go to mirrorofmotivation.com. Get this book free. I will ship it worldwide. doesn't matter where you live. For those of you who play ball, you want to play basketball overseas, this book is called The Overseas Basketball Blueprint. I will show you how to start your basketball career abroad, which means you can live the life that you really want to live by getting your talents out into the world, actually getting paid to play basketball. Can you imagine that? Traveling the world, getting paid for it while playing a game for a living. If you can name a better life than that, I want to know about it. Go to balloverseas.com. I will ship this book to you worldwide, anywhere you live. The basket, Overseas Basketball Blueprint. Now... We got that out the way. Let's get to the comments. SMXBK says, do you have an idea when recreational facilities might open back up in North America? I mean, what I look like, Donald Trump? How would I be able to answer that question? <laughs> I have no idea. I got the same idea you got. Same time, 82. What's good? Coach Kev, what's going on? FXV5. What up? Let's see. Let's see. Ricardo says, what's more expensive to live, Miami or Vegas? Oh, definitely Miami. Vegas is, I mean, Vegas outside of the Strip is not very expensive. It's the Strip. You might be thinking about Las Vegas Strip, but people don't live on the Strip. They visit the Strip. <laughs> but Miami, people live here, definitely Miami. I would say overall, when you talk about the, the size of the space where people live and then just the general cost, definitely Miami. Coffee the Great says, what do you do to make money? I provide value to other people and they give me value back in exchange. Over on Facebook, AO Rebel says, what are good trades? Be more specific in your question. I don't know, I don't know what you're asking. C Lord G1, what's going on? And Simon says, do you think college university is for exposing and creating new skills? Well, it depends on the person and how they use their experience. The school itself is not for that. The school is not really for anything. It depends on how you use it. It's like asking somebody, is, is, uh, is the internet good for creating new skills? Well, it depends on how you use the internet. So that question is, it depends on how that person utilizes it. So that itself doesn't mean anything. Just going to school itself not, is not guaranteed to do anything for you, but it definitely will give you, we'll have a bill at the end of it. That's the one thing you're guaranteed. King Leak 08 says, Malcolm X, one of the greatest human beings of all time. Yeah, Malcolm X's autobiography is a great book. Those of y'all who haven't read that book, make sure you go get it. Hendrix World says, what's the name of the book? Are we here? All right. Yeah, I told you the three books that I'm telling you about here today. Work on your game, the mirror motivation, overseas basketball blueprint. But if there's a different book you're referring to, uh, clarify in your comment and I'll tell you. Sniper Shooter says, I'm a communications major. I received my associate's degree from Gutman College. Congratulations. Transfer for another college. All right, that's what's up. Congratulations on your getting your associates. Ramon says, how long are you planning to do these live streams every day until I stop doing them? FXV5 says, know how to socialize with people is vital. Yes, it is, 100%. AO Rebel says, do I like trade school? I have never gone to trade school, so I can't tell you if I like it or not. I haven't experienced it. Emanor says, I'm Mexican and black. Should I be mad at both of my races because they always lose to Samoans and street fights on YouTube? Well, first of all, what you should do is stop watching street fights on YouTube and invest your time in some things that will make you more valuable instead of wasting your time on bullshit. So that, that answers all of that question. So you don't even have to worry about the rest of it. What is the best surface to train on? Sand, grass, asphalt, etc. Well, that's a very, that question is unanswerable. Surface itself isn't bad or good. It depends on how you use it and the person who's using it. SMX, you said, do you have any idea? Or, or you already asked that. I already answered this. Uh, let's see. Young Tokyo says, can I buy it on Apple Bookstore? Which book are you referring to, Young Tokyo? All of my books are on Apple Books and Amazon and Audible, if you prefer Audible. However, these two books that are free 
they are not free on Amazon or iBooks or Audible. If you buy them from there, you got to buy them. You got to pay the full price. If you want them free, go to balgoverseas.com or mirrormotivation.com. Take care of the shipping, and I'll ship these to you worldwide. And I'm going to offer you some bonuses that you cannot get anywhere else. This book as well, you can buy it on any of those other sites, or you can buy it at workingyourgamebook.com. At workingyourgamebook.com, I give you bonuses that you cannot get anywhere else. You got that? Everybody clear on that. So if you want to buy any of my books on Amazon, iBooks, Audible, you can, but you are not getting a discount. You will pay full price on all of those platforms, okay? There's no discount on any of those platforms. The only way you can get a deal is by getting it from the places that I tell you to get it. But either way you get it, get it. All right, so it's your money. Introspective idea says, what would you say codifying your life experiences and making that area, making that your area of expertise is a good way to put yourself out there and create value for people? Would I say that that's a good way? Well, again, when people use these terms, what's a good what's a good thing to major in? What's a good surface to train on? Is it a good idea to do this? Would you say this is a good thing to do? Who determines what's good and what's bad? You. I can't tell you what's good for you. I can't tell you that going to this school is good and going to this school is bad. Or if you do this drill is good or this drill is bad. As I just explained, when people ask me, how do I find my passion in life? I tell them, you have to go and try things out and see what works for you. You have to see what's good for you and what's not. So what works for me may not work for you. And what works for you may not work for me, or maybe it does, but you have to go try it out and see for yourself. I will provide you the roadmap. I'll tell you, look, these are the things that you can do, and here's the benefits, here's the drawbacks, here's how it worked for me, here's how it's worked for some other people, here are some universal principles that apply to everyone, as I just gave you some universal principles, but... I can't tell you personally that if you go do what I did, that you're going to get the same result. You might get better results. You might get the same. You might get no results whatsoever. You might find that you hate it and you quit. So you have to go out and actually do things yourself to see what works for you and what doesn't. You can't, no guru or expert or influencer can tell you what's going to work for your life. I can give you frameworks as I do in this book right here work on your game. I give you frameworks in this book right here. I give you frameworks in this book right here. But you still got to take the material and you have to apply it. You have to implement the material. Just because somebody gave you some information doesn't mean they decide what you should do with your life. Hopefully everybody understands that. Let's see. Uh, Ramon, please stop posting the same question over and over again and we have to block you. If, I, if you post a question in here and I don't answer it, then that should be a hint that your question is useless. All right, ask better questions or just listen. Somebody might ask a better question that you didn't think of. Uh, SMXBK says, are you planning on writing any other books in the future? Yes. As long as I'm alive, I will write knocking on wood. I will write, I'll put out 100 books. So I got 25 now. Book number 26 should be ready this week. I'm waiting on someone else to finish something that they got to do so I can finish what I got to do so book number 26 could come out. But book 26 is coming out probably... It'll, it will be out in April. Right, if this person don't hurry up, they're going to get fired off the job. Let's see. Clore says, what other things do I enjoy doing besides business and basketball? What I'm doing right now. What is this? Y'all not paying me for this, so it's not business. And I'm not playing basketball. <laughs> so this right here. FX says, do I train people in basketball? I have programs at whoopanbook.com. I wouldn't say that I would never train somebody in basketball, but someone wants me to train them personally, one-on-one, is going to cost you a lot of money. All right, almost any trainer you can find will charge you less than what I would charge you to train you one-on-one. So does that, hopefully that answers your question. So I wouldn't say never, but it's going to cost you. Sniper, I appreciate it. Iman says, is it a bad thing to work a nine to five and just chill after work? Well, like I just explained, I can't tell you what's bad or good for you, but you will have to decide for yourself what's bad or good for you. Ayo Robel on Facebook, uh, go to dreallday.com slash FAQ for my frequently asked questions. If you don't know basic stuff about me, go to dreallday.com slash FAQ where I answer any kind of frequently asked questions like what you just asked. Let's see. All right. So I think we have addressed everything. I'll tell you all one more time. Work on your game book. 
this is the book where I lay out my whole framework in one book. If you're going to read one book of mine, this is the book that you will read, Work On Your Game. If you want to get a book for free before you buy a book because you're not sure you want to invest, you're not sure I'm any good, all right, I'll give you a couple books for free so you can see for yourself. MirrorMotivation.com. I will ship this book to you free worldwide. Just take care of shipping. BallOverseas.com. Overseas Basketball Blueprint. This is specifically for players who want to play professional basketball. Go to BallOverseas.com. Get the Overseas Basketball Blueprint. Everybody, have a great day. I will be doing another live tomorrow. Go to Facebook.com slash Work On Your Game. You can see the schedule for all my live streams. Again, that's Facebook slash Work On Your Game. Just go to Facebook, type my name in. All right, you know my name. It's easy to find. All right, be smart. Wash your hands. Don't touch your eyes, nose, or mouth. Uh, make sure you're not shaking anybody else's hands. Stay away from that rony Rome. Stay in the house. Social distancing. Six feet apart. Work on your game. Dre all day.